So now let's figure out how to calculate the lift and induced drag for finite wings. So first, let's review some nomenclature and maybe introduce some new things. So remember in 2D, everything was per unit span, so we had L prime, B prime, and M prime, and the corresponding coefficients were lowercase cl, lowercase cd, and cm. Whereas in 3D, we're going to have lift, drag, and moments, and we have capital CL, capital CD, and capital CM. So for subsonic flow, note that the total drag is the induced drag plus skin friction drag plus pressure drag. And these two parts are due to viscosity. Whereas the induced drag is an inviscid effect. These two together are what's also known as profile drag. As they both have to do with the shape and size of the airfoil. The drag coefficient associated with this is just CD, the drag coefficient per unit span from 2D, as these are the two drag sources that exist in 2D flow. Now it works out that at up to moderate angles of attack, the profile drag coefficient for a finite wing is the same as that for a 2D. So CD is DF plus dp over one half rho infinity d infinity squared s. Whereas we have an induced drag coefficient cd i is di over one half rho infinity d infinity squared s. So putting that together, we can see that there's partially a contribution from the 2D effect and partially a contribution from the 3D effect. So CD, the drag coefficient is little CD, which is the 2D profile drag coefficient plus the induced drag coefficient. So this comes from 2D airfoil data, from numerical simulations or experiments, and this is going to be determined here. Now, if we go back to the idea of the vortex filament, remember this was an infinitely long line of vortices. This was previously thought of as a straight line. Now, in general, there's no reason these can't be curvy and still go off to infinity at the ends. and have some circulation all along it. Now this filament still has the same constant circulation along its length. And if we consider a small directed segment, the L, and have some other point P, which is not necessarily on the filament, And we have a radius vector from dl to p. Now then the velocity at p due to the vorticity at dl is dv equals, sorry, over 4 pi, circulation over 4 pi, dl cross r, over the length of r cubed. And this equation is known as the Biot-Savart law. Now deriving this is beyond the scope of this course, so we'll take this uh, as a fact here and move forward using it. 
Now, if you combine many of these vortex filaments with a uniform free stream, this allows you to model the flow over a finite wing. So the details of this derivation and how this is developed are in the notes and in the textbook. However, first here I'm just going to give a couple of highlights. So if we have first a semi-infinite vortex filament, and we integrate along it, then we can get the induced velocity at a point is the circulation over 4 pi h, where h is the perpendicular distance between the filament and the point at which we're determining the velocity. Here, P is in the plane through A, which is the end of the vortex filament, that's perpendicular here. So this is going to be a useful result. And when we combine this with two of Helmholtz theorems, Basically, these say that the strength of a vortex filament is constant along its length, and two, that the vortex filament cannot end in the fluid. It needs to either extend to infinity, end on a solid boundary, or be a closed loop. And the final new idea we need before being able to present the results and have them make any sense is the idea of a lift distribution along the span of a wing. So here's a sketch of a wing. That we're looking at from the front. There's the y direction. So this is y equals b over 2. This is y is negative b over 2. And here's our wing. And we'll have some distribution of lift along the span. So, so this is L prime of y equals rho infinity, v infinity, gamma of y using the Kutta-Dukowski theorem. So clearly this must go to zero at the wing tips because there's no pressure difference between the top and bottom of the wing that can be supported there. Now in general, the cord, the angle of attack, and even the airfoil section can vary along the span. So there must be some distribution of lift in general and therefore of the circulation gamma. So our goal is to get this lift and circulation distribution for a finite wing um, and also through that to get the induced drag and total lift. And we'll develop that next.